started so we'll be seeing uh, you know of course right now there's a verification of your details if you actually did uh, you know have your names as they should be on your voters card and of course in the documents so that's going on we'll be checking in with that later on but right now we've been talking about inclusiveness of ICT and we've been saying that you know equip the young people with skills of the future and skills of the future it's a digital world you need to know what to do and from the National Information Technology Authority NITA Uganda I have the marketing and communications uh, manager Stephen Chirenga good morning Morning. Good morning, Claudia. Standard that, of course, someone <laughs> <laughs> in ICT would have a whole, I don't even know, no, it's, it's a, <laughs> the same thing, you just pimped it up. No, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a small, it's normal. portable, normal. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> so, um, Neta Uganda, yes. I was just sharing with you off air that I thought they are two years old or six months old because for some reason we now see a lot of NITA, we hear a lot of NITA, but you said they've existed for what? For the next year would be our 10th year. 10 years, yes. imagine that. Yes, uh, and I was sharing, uh, you know, previously we were infrastructure driven. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, building the foundations that are now bearing fruit. Mm -hmm. So before we were building fiber, we were putting up, you know, cyber laws. Uh, and now we are doing, you know, more services. We're becoming more service driven. Mm -hmm. So that's why probably you hadn't heard of us. So those um, cyber laws actually exist? Yes, they do and actually being enforced. We have three so far that, that we have. We have the Computer Misuse Act, yes. which I'm sure you've heard about yes, when yes. someone does mobile money fraud or something like that. Mm -hmm. There is the Electronic Transaction Act, which allows you to transact digitally. Okay. So that means that today, if, if you decided to sell your iPhone mm -hmm. um, on, on, on email, it, it, you know, it can be a binding contract. Okay. By email and say, you know, hi yes. Stephen, I'd like to offer you this. And they say, okay, yes, I accept. I'll give you this in yes. exchange. Okay. So that's an electronic uh, act that is okay. now recognized. And then lastly, the, the Digital Signatures Act, which is also, which allows that if I, if I sign off as Stephen, that signature can be accepted. Uh, online? In, yes, online. Okay. And it's enforceable. So on top of those laws, we have also built infrastructure. Mm -hmm. uh, we have 2,400 kilometers of fiber across Uganda. Not where we want to be, but we're getting there. In layman terms, that what makes my internet go faster. <laughs> 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 you explain to us the, the ordinary people. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, so what it means is that, is that as an example, if uh, because so far we are mostly serving the government ministries. Mm -hmm. So it means that previously when a government ministry had to contend with costs of, say, $1,000 per megabit per second, mm -hmm. they would first uh, wait to commit to connecting yeah. to the internet. Now, with our pricing of $70 per Mbps, hmm. we have more ministries coming on because now the barrier of entry, the cost of entry has been lowered. Uh, lowered. Mm -hmm. So it means that we are, we are now encouraging uptake, mm -hmm. encouraging digitization within the ministries, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and thereby delivering on efficiencies. I was sharing earlier on that um, because of such, such efficiencies being delivered, mm -hmm. in the past 12 months, we saved government 4 million working hours. So that means that now they, ha they now have more time to do more for us as citizens yeah. because they have become more efficient. Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. And, and okay, so for me to understand this, yes. NITA is by government that helps government agencies or ministries work online. Okay, okay yeah. Well, so NITA is, is, is um, to put it in the layman's term, the government CIO, the government IT manager. Mm -hmm. So it means that everything ICT, every need ICT, by we government? take care of it, yes, by government, okay, yes, we take okay, care of it. Okay. And we also regulate mm -hmm. and ensure that um, whatever standards we come up with are the very best. So that even as the government gives you a service, mm -hmm. it's within a secure environment. So we have the national, things like the national ICT security framework, mm -hmm. which stipulates how government should operate dig you know, digitally. Mm -hmm. So that if I am transacting with Ministry X, I have all the confidence that it will be in a secure environment, it won't be hacked, my information won't be compromised. Oh, okay. Yeah, so those frameworks we, we, you know, we come up with and we also enforce with our partners across government so that uh, we are in a safe digital environment. All right, so I've seen that uh, NIT has been having workshops, um, yes. for example, inclusive ICTs. Yes. Uh, my concern is always a conversation on how we can include persons with disabilities yes. in our conversation when it yeah. comes to ICT because just like we're including them in all the other sectors, we yes. need to make sure that if we're going forward in this way, they're also included. And there was, was it a workshop on this or yes, an initiative? Tell me about that. Okay, so with, uh, with, uh, with our different uh, development partners, mm -hmm. 
we, we were able to hold uh, what has been a continuous engagement okay. with the people with disabilities. Mm. Um, and, and, and the idea is that because, because as you've said, ICT, uh, you know, by, by its nature, it is inclusive of, of me, whether I am from, from, from the most remote area of the world mm -hmm. or from the most developed. That's what it does, you know, it, it, it breaks the divide. Yes. So uh, what we've done is that we've partnered with the different associations that, 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 that bring together people with disabilities, and we have a deliberate drawn-out uh, schedule with them where we, you know, we go and upskill them. We have um, a facility at the Ministry of ICT, uh, funded by the Korean government, wh which, which allows us to periodically invite them, teach them how to use ICT, upskill them on how they can use ICT because most of them actually have you know businesses they're trying to do you know different things that can enable them earn a living uh, and and we show them how they can use ICT to you know to become better yeah so this is happening in Kampala it, uh, and also other regions within Uganda mm -hmm. so we so we and and, and so far the feedback is that uh, you know just from the recent one that was about yeah. a week and a half ago the feedback is that it's it's actually very relevant because you know simple things like how to send an email or how to, Imagine. yeah, you know, and, and that makes their life much easier mm -hmm. because now they're able to see that now if I, am, if I am able to send an email, I don't have to go through the hassle of, of moving maybe say one kilometer to meet a supplier or to yeah. meet, yeah. So, so, so that, that you know, has a very big impact and we are quite, you know, we are, we are humbled by the feedback that we keep getting whenever we go to interact with them. Okay, so do yes. you do trainings? Say, I know that you're training those people. Yes. But I'm concerned because you're working with government. Yes. And we've been giving them backlash on how they also don't know how to really operate this yes. space. Um, so outside of running some of these agencies for them, mm. especially in the digital space, are there, is there training for these ministries? Yes, there is. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> and some, some examples we've trained so far about 6,000 government officers okay. in the use of ICT. That has translated into um, having... Um, over 70 percent of government uh, automated it has related into things like um, having 268 websites up and being operational into things like um, having 75 and above e-services available mm -hmm. uh, for citizens once they log on to the citizens portal so and these trainings are continuous because because essentially as NITA, we cannot, we cannot go and manage each and every government website. No. So mm -hmm. what we do is that we will build a website for the government, mm -hmm. for the government ministry, train the IT officer that's to within that ministry, it. yes, to run okay. it, and also continually, you know, go back, check in on them, yeah. see what's happening, are there new technologies, train them on that, mm. so that they, you know, so that they become partners because end of the day, it is a collective effort between us and all our partners in government. Okay. Yes. So, um, for NITA, you're going to take out the ministries because I want us to talk about the e-citizen portal. Yeah. Is that where the public now interfaces directly with you or with the agencies? Okay, so the e-citizen portal is the one-stop door mm -hmm. to all government services. Okay. So, um, the portal so far has uh, over 75 e-services. Mm -hmm. As an example, today elections are happening, LC1 elections. I can log on to the portal right now, mm -hmm. check and see where I am located as a, as a as voter. As a voter, yes. yeah. So that way I won't have to go and check at the district or at the municipal. I'll just log in, see, you know, Stephen Chirenga, you're located, uh, Nakawa Division what 2. What information do I input? Like national ID number something? You can put in a national ID number or your voter, your, or or voter's voter number. ID number. Yes, the yes, voter yes, ID number. Um, eventually, once we progress, mm -hmm. we'll just be using our national ID number. Because we understand that that as a citizen, you it you know becomes cumbersome to remember voter ID number, permit I mean, national number, driving national ID, driving all that yes. stuff. Yeah. Mm. So so we're building a platform that will allow for single identification using a national ID number. National ID so number. that will allow you to get access to all these government services mm -hmm. at one logon. Okay. So today, yeah, so if if, you, if they've been wanting to vote, yeah. and it's a drag to go and because that's what they're doing now is the yes. process to actually check your name and check if everything is right. Yes. That's one way to do it. Yes. So and it's e-citizen. It is www.ecitizen.go.ug. Okay. And it is free uh, to access if you're using the MyUG Wi-Fi that you also provide. Mm. Oh. Yes. Okay. So yes. <laughs> you get everything in one. Yes. Talk to me about the um, e-learning portal. Okay. <coughs> So the e-learning portal is an initiative that we have developed together with our partners from Ministry of Education mm. and our donor-funded partners in, in, uh, in USAID uh, and, and, and UNICEF. 
So what it does is that, is that um, it, it, it allows for students and teachers to access uh, educational content uh, that they can, that they can uh, use to better their education. We understand that um, today, unless you are going to one of those big colleges, traditional schools, uh, you won't stand a fair chance uh, if you're coming from a less uh, established yeah. uh, school. So what this portal does is that it, it, it gives you the same opportunity mm -hmm. that you would have had if you were in one of these big schools that we have been accustomed to. So, so far, uh, we've been able to train over 1,500 students who are using it. It's been in pilot phase. Okay. And uh, we've trained over 500 teachers. Mm -hmm. um, special consideration has been done, has been made for the students who are in refugee camps in the West Nile region. Uh, and, and the uptake has been quite impressive because, mm -hmm. you know, in the refugee camps, they may not have the opportunity that, say, uh, the youth might have in the in the in the urban so areas. Are you targeting the these these children in refugee camps who are in school, or it doesn't matter? It doesn't matter as long as you have interest, because what happens is that they'll organize themselves in communities, okay. and then and then and then we can facilitate that through the Ministry of Education okay. and and our development partner. So what it means is that is that um, as a student, I, I no longer have to worry about where I can get the latest content around uh, mathematics or mm -hmm. social or. Uh, uh, but, uh, but science yes. or uh, you know philosophy, history, etc. Mm. Now, it so 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 because so because that portal is now available for the students and teachers, they can now one access the content. Two, if I'm not able to read it now, I can download it. When I go read back home, later. yeah, when mm -hmm. possibly maybe I don't have a bundle or I don't have uh, coverage in my village, mm. I can still access it because it can be gotten offline. Okay, so it's yes. different subjects with different content. Yes. And this is for all school levels. Yes, for all school levels, say. primary, secondary, ah, okay. and uh, also tertiary. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so, so, so because of the success that we have seen, that we have experienced um, in this pilot phase, we're now rolling it out nationwide. Okay. Uh, and to do that, uh, I'm happy to share that as NITA, what we have done is that we ha we are now hosting that application, that platform, mm -hmm. within the national that, uh, data center, which houses the government cloud. Uh, this data center is industry grade. It is secure, sort of that. I will not oversell it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, but it is, it is, it is, it is uh, set up the right way to ensure that whatever service we are offering the citizens can be accessed all the time. Mm -hmm. So, in hosting that application, we are we are ensuring that the service is offered free of charge to the student and the teacher. Okay. Uh, and also in areas where we have the connectivity, we are ensuring that up to the last school we will extend fiber to that uh, institution mm -hmm. such that they are able to also access it. So we are using our inf the national infrastructure that's owned by, by government to give access. To give access. Okay. We are hosting the application mm -hmm. so that it is accessed all the time at, at no cost or inconvenience to the end user. Mm. Yes, and we are also joining in, in, uh, in upskilling uh, so such that they are able to know how to navigate around the portal. In yes, the event, yeah. And also, because I'm concerned, if you're saying teacher and student, if yes. there's information on a subject that I'm interested in, yes. and for example, I'm a teacher, yes. and I have students who might have also interest in that, yes. is it that the teacher can then use the portal to teach, or is it that the teacher can send students? I mean, is the access open that it doesn't matter whether you're a student or a teacher, it's the same kind of information that you both would need? If it I can, is it broken down in that way that it can be used as part of the curriculum? And then can also be used for extra reading as a student. Yes, it can. It can be used as a curriculum because most of, I mean, most of it is most of the information there is actually open source, meaning it can be tweaked if it, you know, it is as according to what you yes. want. <laughs> and also, you know, there's no restriction to where you can get it from. Mm -hmm. So it can be going from, be it Harvard in America or mm. to uh, in Oxford in, in in UK or wherever in the world. Yeah. So so as long as I mean, so it is not. Uh, cast you know cast in stone to say this is what we give you only. Yes. It is open to whatever is available, to what you want, yes. Yeah. And the reach is 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 uh, extraordinary. Mm -hmm. But also if you'd like to do things like lesson planning and um, as a teacher, yeah. you can you know plan your lessons, have a schedule. That's all possible within the portal, and you can you know mm -hmm. track and yeah. So it's can you upload a les lesson or um, you can upload content as long as uh, but there'll be a, a, a process around oh. uh, uh, around right, the approval right, right, right. because then you also want to keep it a bit a bit uh, relevant mm -hmm. or at least factual. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> in this day and yes. age of, of uh, <laughs> you, you, you guys fact, fact check this. Uh, uh, they're yeah. not giving us content that yes, is not. Yes, not. Yeah, <laughs> it's not right. Yes. Oh, fantastic! So this e-learning portal is already up. And yes, running? it's already up. Yeah, can be accessed from the citizen portal as I shared. Mm. www.ecitizen.go.ug. Okay. Um, if you're within any of the 284 locations uh, in Kampala or Entebbe, mm. uh, where we have free Wi-Fi, that can be accessed free of charge. Okay. Yes, and uh, in the schools where we have extended connectivity, because we have 17 institutions so far, uh, universities and secondary schools where we have extended uh, national fiber mm -hmm. as a function of trying to lessen the cost of, of the use of ICT. Okay. Um, yeah, it will also be free of charge in these places. Fantastic. So it's yeah. ecitizen.go.ug. You can yeah. go on there and as you said, it's, it's an open platform so you can click whatever your need is. So if, for example, today the LC elections, you want to check your name on the Electoral Commission um, registers uh, tally, you can yeah. actually do that. If just e-learning, as he's been explaining, you're a yes. student, you're a teacher, and as he said, primary, secondary, and also the tertiary institutions. So there's yes. lots of content there that you can, or maybe just doing research. Yes, <laughs> even that, yes. Correct. Anyone can access this information. Uh, we're going to check in with Andrew Chamagrib just before we wind up here with Stephen Cheringa from Nita Uganda. Yes. Social media tax, is it going to affect your business? <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, Are it people will. going to run away? Or no. you think it, it's nothing? No, it will not, because if you remember, actually, His Excellency the president and the Honorable Minister of Finance had shared that that tax will not affect any education or, or research mm. um, information. So, so it's us with the nonsense who are affected. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <dude. laughs> no, no, no. It's us yes. with the nonsense, but I, yeah. I understood what yes. he meant. So, yes. Um, <laughs> yes, if you are a student or a teacher, regardless of where you are in the country, you can yes. access this portal and get information to either, as I said, you know, um, improve what you're teaching to your students or as a student, improve also the knowledge that you have. Today is uh, the LC uh, elections. Of course, we're going to check in as we wind up with Andrew Chamagero, who's on the ground. Uh, it's uh, 8.47, this should have started, uh, you know, meeting the candidates and remember it's lining up behind the candidate of your choice. Uh, it should be interesting. Andrew, good morning. Wow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> interesting. So as we can see, of course, at the polling stations, remember the phase now first is for people to check their names according to the tally and see if their names are written correctly and the numbers actually match what is on the voters' card. And of course, as they gear up, I think 9 a.m. should be when they actually start lining up a candidate of your choice. We'll give it to Andrew Chamagro to see these pictures. What is happening, uh, of course, uh, in Chebando, uh, people trying to, I don't know if that's chaos really, I don't want to describe it as that, I don't want to be alarmist, but uh, of course they're gearing up to line up behind the candidate of their choice as they vote for the local council leaders, that is all happening today. It's a public holiday, you've got no excuse to stay home, <laughs> go and make sure that you know the right leaders are the ones you have elected. Thank you so much, Stephen Jeringa from Nita, Uganda. Yes. This is not the end of your work, you, no, 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 you, it's keep, nice. you keep going. Yes, what yes. is the wish list that you have every one in Uganda and access the agents, the government agencies? The wish list is that the next time you want to renew your passport, mm -hmm. you can do it from the comfort of your chair in the studio. Can you do it next year? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a work in progress. <laughs> do it yes, as soon as possible. That's a work in progress. And I mean, yeah. it's, I mean we're, we're, we're just making some, some good progress, as I said earlier on. As an example, in the health sector, um, if today I had a terminal illness, say mm -hmm. HIV, uh, and I had you know, I need to get my, I, my, my, my ARVs yeah. and my health center had run out of stock. Yes. Before three months ago, if I had gone to the health center, I would have to wait 30 days for them to get a to restock. restock the yes. ARVs. Okay. Today, uh, if I go there and they don't have, it takes them 24 hours to restock ARVs. Mm -hmm. And that's a difference between life and death if, you know, you have that kind of uh, terminal illness. Medic. Yes. Okay. So, so such, such, such impact is what we are, we are beginning to see mm -hmm. through the use of ICT. So we are very proud to have, uh, you know, to be driving this change with our partners collectively within the ministries, yeah. development partners, and of course the citizens. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so as, as you've said, it's a continuous journey. <laughs> yes. uh, we look forward to, 
you know, uh, you and TV continuing to be our partners Definitely. in driving this change. Mm -hmm. And yeah, um, thank <laughs> you for having me over. Yeah, but the passport one, please. Yes. <laughs> uh, mine is about to <laughs> get done. If I don't have to queue up, it would be great. Yes, that is Marketing and Communications Manager from NITA Uganda. That is the National Information Technology Authority, Uganda, Stephen Chirenga. The rest of you have a good morning and go and vote.